Well, financial expert and insider Catherine Austin Fitz will be joining us to do our first interview of 2012. It is Monday, the second day of January 2012. It's InfoWars Nightly News. Thank you for joining us. We have grave tidings, obviously, for you this evening. Our top story, the NDAA was signed by President Barack Hussein Obama in the final hours of 2011, when I guess they thought no one would notice. And we understand why they wanted to hide this. They don't want public opposition to mount to what they are doing. They want to do their dirty little crimes in the dead of night in darkness. That's when evil is done. And our report uh, has been at the top of Drudge the last few days, um, but uh, other outlets are also reporting the same thing. Obama's signing statement on NDAA, I have the power to detain Americans, but I won't. And the ACLU points out the signing statement is not binding. It means nothing. And of course, it was Barack Obama, we now know. We're going to play a clip of that come up in a few minutes. Uh, who demanded that the provision to indefinitely detain Americans be added and kept in there. Now, the question is, can you legalize tyranny? Uh, can you legalize bringing slavery back? If, uh, say, Italy, you know, 2,000 years ago in Rome, slavery was legal for anybody. Most of the slaves were white. So they could say, hey, we did it before, precedent. We're going to go to, say, France and uh, grab 10,000 people and bring them here and make them be our slaves. Could you legalize slavery? Could you legalize barbecuing children, as I've said many times, on the White House lawn? Could you legalize horrible things like animal cruelty or pedophilia? No, you cannot legalize it. There is an organic, universal right to say no to it. And... Uh, the former land of the free, home of the brave, that had the most due process checks and balances, now is a leading light of darkness worldwide, uh, or black sunshine, you could call it, uh, to steal a line from uh, uh, White Zombie. That's what we're dealing with here, where they go further than North Korea on paper and say, we'll arrest citizens and have them disappear into a black hole forever. We will torture citizens. We want you to be afraid. Uh, you can be stripped of your citizenship as well and flown to some black site or secret site uh, that our criminal government has set up all over the Middle East and Eastern Europe, including torture centers at Romanian uh, closed down horse clubs. Remember that came out in the Associated Press last year in 2011. This is legalizing horrors. Can you legalize torture? Can you legalize warrantless wiretapping? Every form of just hardcore oppression, the 200 proof stuff is being thrown in our face right now. And so, of course, they lied and said, oh, don't worry, it doesn't affect citizens. And then it came out, it did affect citizens. Obama said, I'll veto it. And then it turned out behind the scenes, he was pressuring people to support it. They do this because they're liars and because they don't want to admit what they're doing so that public opposition can mount. They want to have CNN and Fox News get up there and say, it's okay, it doesn't affect U.S. citizens while it does. And they want to be able to have Obama go to his constituents and say, I'm against it when he actually signed it. So it's like a hall of mirrors or something where you never know what's true or what isn't. And that's what they're looking for is this, is this fog of war where everybody is basically confused. But this is a real wake-up call for everyone, that tyranny is here in our republic, and the corrupt ruling class who created over a $1,000 trillion in fake assets or derivatives, the big mega banks that have taken over our government and, and financed both uh, political parties, now know that we're waking up, and so they're trying to at least put it on paper that, yeah, we'll spy on you without warrants. Yeah, we'll set up domestic checkpoints. Yeah, we'll federalize your local police. Yeah, we'll build FEMA camps. We'll go ahead and activate them. And we're going to start censoring the internet. Yeah, you know, the SOPA Act really does do that. And yes, we're going to secretly arrest Americans whenever we want and disappear you into another region. That's being done on multiple fronts 
to intimidate and scare people that are awake and involved. And it's being done because the power structure is afraid. The power structure is scared and is trying to protect themselves from a public that they've robbed and abused. So here's the different reports. Obama signing statement on NDAA. I have the power to detain Americans, but I won't. There's a chilling photo, by the way, above that of Newt Gingrich. You know, you talk about Newt Gingrich being a globalist, Newt Gingrich being for carbon taxes and all the rest of it. Look at that photograph of him. That really uh, captures the essence of Newt Gingrich. But again, if you go to our article, it has his signing statement where he says that, that, that he won't implement the secret arrest and disappearance of U.S. citizens. But again, he still signed the law. He didn't bring in a line item veto, which he doesn't technically have, but which he basically had by threatening a general veto. He, I'll say it again, demanded that the legislation be put in there. Let's go ahead and go to this clip of Senator Carl Levin when he was getting blamed for all this. And he, and, and he does deserve some of the blame. I mean, you can't have these two ping-ponging it back and forth like pass the hand grenade and saying, well, Obama wants it, well, Carl Levin wants it. But the point is, he didn't want to get the blame, so he came out and said, look, it's Obama that wants this. And that's since been confirmed. Here it is. And I'm wondering whether the senator is familiar with the fact that the language, the language which precluded the application of Section 1031 to American citizens was in the bill that we originally approved in the Armed Services Committee and the administration asked us to remove the language which says that U.S. citizens and lawful residents would not be subject to this section. Is the senator familiar with the fact that it was the administration that asked us to remove the very language which we had in the bill which passed the committee and that we removed it at the request of the administration that would have said the app that this determination would not apply to U.S. citizens and lawful residents. I'm just wondering, is the senator familiar with the fact that it was the administration which asked us to remove the very language, the absence of which is now objected to by the senator from Illinois? I, I'm familiar now because the senator from Michigan has shared that fact with me. Now, I know here on the nightly news, I've probably played that clip five times in the last month. We played it on the radio. It's admitted. The ACLU is an analysis. Ron Paul has done it. Major legal law firms and, and, and think tanks have looked at it. The senators that wrote it admit it's for U.S. citizens. But for a month, we had to have debates about whether it affected citizens or not. Now, why did they do that? To kill opposition. Again, why did Obama say that he was going to veto the bill? so that people thought, well, let's not oppose it. He's just going to veto it anyways. The whole time he was the one demanding it, it be in there. That is, his handlers were. That's how these political people work. That's how their deception operates. That's how they get this stuff done. In fact, coming up in a minute, we've got uh, you know the headline where they announced, oh, they pulled the bestiality section out of the NDAA, saying the troops can basically bring barn animals you know, uh, into the uh, bases. And then Senator Cornyn, when he got criticized for passing that out of Texas, he came out and said, well, we've stripped it, but they had the House add it back in. That's going to come up. Well, here it is. Bestiality and sodomy repeal stripped from NDAA. Then if you scroll down, they've got a link to the government track uh, site, and they've got the letter from Cornyn saying he had it stripped, but he knew full well and voted later to accept it when the bill came back from the House and so now it's the law that bestiality is legal in the military. I mean, this NDAA, things just get crazier and crazier every year now. What's going to be in next year's that you can have sex with Martians or ghosts or Keebler elves or something? I mean, eh, point is, why is everything getting so weird? Secret arrest of citizens, a worldwide declaration of war, announcements that you can be taken you know, overseas to be tortured. It's crazy. It's crazy. And it's the end of Posse Comitatus. Do those of us that were right about the fact that Posse Comitatus is being eroded in this nation 
so that the military can be on the streets of America? Do we get an apology now? This is all coming true? No. Hundreds of publications, CBS News, NBC News, ABC News, New York Times, every day I see articles saying Alex Jones and Ron Paul are insane. They're worried about military on the streets of America. But at the end of the day, I want to state this. They want to keep this stuff secret because they know it's outrageous and they don't want to be publicly rebuked for it. They want to just implement the law, quietly find cops and military that will follow unconstitutional orders, and they don't want us there the whole time pointing out it's illegal and wrong. Again, it's illegal to pass a law saying black people aren't humans again and are slaves. And it's illegal to say we're all slaves and have no due process or rights and can disappear into a torture camp. So again, this is all a fraud and tyrants always try to create legalese to rationalize what they're doing. But as a human being, I have a right to say no to it and to decry it. So they're not strong. They're doing this because they're weak and they're scared of the public waking up to them. And because they want to have it on paper that they can start using the military and hit men and contractors against the American people. Remember, Obama said and has been using these new powers he declared for himself to kill U.S. citizens he claims are connected to terrorists. Well, don't you want to capture them then if, if, if they have such great intel? Don't you want to give them a trial so we can actually hear the facts? No, they just say they're terrorists, so they don't deserve rights, and now they're saying the American people are terrorists. And they sign this thing on New Year's evening because they're embarrassed of it, showing that they don't want opposition to start being uh, basically ratcheted up against this. Now, I have another report here because this legislation says they can secretly arrest, torture, or kill citizens, but following an older piece of legislation in the previous defense authorization for enemy combatants, they say, we won't secretly arrest or kill or torture citizens, but the Secretary of Defense or the President can strip you extrajudicially of your citizenship, and then you disappear to a black site, a torture camp overseas, uh, in places like Egypt and Romania, uh, these sites have been exposed. So now on top of it, they've introduced another bill, H.R. 3166, Enemy Expatriation Act, but notice it says that if your speech supports the hostilities, if you, if, if what you're doing and saying, we've seen attorney generals say that if you criticize a war, you're aiding terrorists, that citizens don't have a right to be against a war, you could be disappeared into a black hole. Uh, so they're trying that as well. But in the final equation here, what all of these tyrants that have helped steal trillions of dollars and helped centralize the economy and bankrupt things, what you need to know is that you have a 9% approval rating, Congress, 9% and dropping, the lowest it's ever been. Both parties are universally decried. And all the so-called liberals I know have been out for years buying firearms and are waking up to liberty. What the system needs to know is that the people are voting with their dollars and buying record amounts of firearms as their response to this tyranny. And they're even telling different groups that call and, and do surveys, why are you buying guns? They're telling them because we're worried about a corrupt government. We're worried about a collapse. We don't trust the government. But I'm going to get back to that article in a minute. I want to briefly just finish up with the NDAA with some more clips uh, you just saw Senator Levin saying the White House demanded this. That's why we added this in there. You can go to the legislative record and see that as well. We don't just take Levin's word.